20 years ago, we received in the mail at my father's house a copy of a microfiche that was the ship's manifest from a boat that had sailed from uh, Piraeus in Greece. It, the boat was called the SS Patris that had sailed from Piraeus into New York Harbor. And one of the names of the 30 names just listed in this ship's manifest on that particular page of the manifest was Sarbanes. And there was a PhD student who was doing research on immigration, a Greek American, and he saw the name Sarbanes and he thought maybe it was a relative of ours because it's not a very common name. So on the off chance he copied this and he mailed it to my father. It turns out that uh, that was my grandfather, mm -hmm. Spiridon Sarbanes, and it has the full entry, his name, the name of the village he came from, called Rihya, um, the particulars, his height, his weight, the color of his eyes, who was going to meet him when he arrived, and so forth. But to complete the story, this past summer, we went to Greece, I took my family for the first time, and uh, my father came with us, my, my mother is deceased now, uh, but my father came with us. And when I was in Athens, the first few days after we had arrived, this was in August of last year, uh, I, I remembered about this, this ship's manifest, and I, I thought that, that, that he had made his passage from Greece to America in August. And so I, just on the off chance, I called back uh, to my uh, assistant and I said, go into my office and look at the wall, at the ship's manifest, and tell me the date that my grandfather sailed from Greece to America. And she got back on the phone. Now this was, I made the call on August uh, like 13th or 14th. Um, she, get, she got back on the phone and she said, your father, your grandfather left Piraeus on August 12th, 1909. And we had arrived in Greece for that trip on August 11th, 2009. So in other words, it had been exactly, almost to the day, a hundred years from when my grandfather was making his passage to the United States, we were making a return trip from the United States to Greece, and it sent a shudder up, up and down my spine. But more than that, it made me think of all that had happened, all that had transpired within that hundred year period, which, which is the story of the Greek immigrants who came to this country. A lot of hard work, and uh, my grandfather used to get up you know, around 4.30 in the morning, and uh, you know, he was a perfectionist. The bread had to be perfect, and the gloria had to be perfect. Uh, all the, the, the geese might die, the, you know, everything had to be exactly the way it should be. And uh, he worked very, very hard. We all pitched in. Uh, my great-grandfather, Nikitas uh, Manas, was a sponger. And uh, what happened was he was in the Pensacola area in the north uh, part of Florida. And uh, he, uh, he, co he contracted uh, pneumonia. And uh, they didn't have penicillin back then in 1937. Or they didn't have access to penicillin. penicillin. And he, he passed away very, very young and left five children. So all the children, my, actually my great aunts and uncles, they worked in the bakery and they all chipped in. And my grandfather, Kosamyaoli, uh, supported them. He was, he was, I get very emotional. He was a wonderful man, and uh, he taught me how to Greek dance. So uh, I, uh, I danced the Kalimniko like he did. And I lead the Kalimniko and, uh, and a lot of the island dances. And I'm very proud of that because uh, 
he was a terrific person and he didn't ask for a lot of attention and he never turned anyone down and they didn't make a lot of money because uh, they gave everything away. They gave all the pastries away, uh, the bread. Uh, during uh, Easter around uh, Saracosti, uh, but even uh, the week of Easter to Holy Week, uh, everybody would come in in the furno and uh, he would bake the lambs in the furno, you know, for the, almost the entire town. So uh, he was just a good man and he died very young. So I tried to do everything I can to keep up, uh, just keep up, uh, live up to his standards. Growing up, listening to everybody speaking and talking all at once, by the way, um, and then you, uh, I picked up the stories about what life was like back where they came from. And being Jews, even in Greece, and as you know, if it wasn't for our Greek neighbors, no Jew would have survived in Greece. Um, the, uh, our Greek friends and neighbors literally saved the few Jews that were left. And that's something I will always be grateful for. But um, about half, uh, before World War II, there were 80,000, approximately 80,000 Jews in Salonika. By the time the Nazis finished with us, there were about a thousand left. The only way that thousand survived, those thousand survived, is because their Greek neighbors hid them away. But I grew up hearing stories about what transpired in Europe at the time and their desire to come to the United States and how they had dreams and they read, you know, that the, the uh, you know, the milk and honey, and that the streets were paved with gold, and that they were going to have the most remarkable life in the United States of America. Now, the reality wasn't quite as good as the buildup, but the reality is they survived, and they came to the United States. I always wanted to run for public office because I wanted to give something back to this country for taking my family in and realizing that, particularly coming from Salonika, the chances of my family having been exterminated in the Holocaust were pretty good. And so this was my way, public service was my way of giving something back to the United States of America for giving us a life, and not only allowing us to survive, which we have, but to thrive as well. Well, I grew up in a small town in South Georgia, so there were only about two Greek families, and there was no Greek church, no Greek school. Uh, my grandfather had a restaurant, so we would go to Jacksonville to the supplier to get feta and kalamatas, and uh, we would sneak a little of those on the salad in the restaurant. But I didn't have the opportunity of that kind of Greek community, and that's what made it more important, I think, for me to learn from him. He taught me the alphabet, taught me to count to ten, taught me to say I love you, thank you, and do this a lot, and that's really what you need in Greece, actually. I think the census did a study that showed that the, the Greek Americans move the fastest, the quickest, in terms of uh, moving up the educational and professional ladder in this mm -hmm. country. Mm -hmm. So that's been a, a, a very important hallmark, and I think our community is characterized by a strong uh, sense of hard work, of excellence. Uh, the church plays an important role. The family plays an important role. And, um, but we have to hold on to these values as we move on through the, you know, from generation to generation.